Hello, my name is Amir. I'm pleased to say that I'm a dental surgeon. I'm actually a little dentist working on my own in a small practice in a little town called Habent in the United Kingdom. And I'm here to talk to you. A budding doctor like my own son, Jordan. Hello. A junior doctor, a GP, a senior doctor, any doctor about this yellow stuff we call bilirubin. About the metabolism of bilirubin, about conjugated forms of bilirubin and unconjugated forms of bilirubin. Essentially a brief summary of the chemistry of bilirubin. That is you may be presented or confronted in an exam with a patient with hemolytic jaundice. And the examiner it could be any one of the examiners, it could be the chief himself, Professor Peter Brennan, a consultant head and neck surgeon. But maxillofacial surgery is the last thing in his mind. He's going to cast his mind back to 1992 when he was a house officer in the liver department at the Radcliffe Hospital in Oxford. And he may have had a long, tough week. And he may invite you to look at his patient with hemolytic jaundice, but instead of asking you about the sorts and types of jaundice, he may ask you a question just a little bit below the belt. A simple enough question, but enough to bring everyone to their knees. He may simply ask you, tell me how bilirubin is formed. Well, let me remind us, there is a red blood cell, an erythrocyte, born and bred in the bone marrow. And red blood cells do not go on living forever. They have a lifespan of 120 days. And after that, it's breaking down. And it's breaking down, releasing this substance called hemoglobin. So the real question is, how do we go from this? Hemoglobin, which is a four-ring arrangement, a cyclic tetraperyl to bilirubin. Again, a tetraperyl, but arranged in a linear fashion. So something dramatic must have happened to have allowed this. And the first thing that happens is that the iron of the hemoglobin goes. Then the globin part goes, leaving this skeleton, this ring structure. This ring is then broken down at one of these points and opened up and unrolled like a sausage roll. And that is an enzyme which does that, which is responsible for this unrolling effect, as it were. The hemooxygenase enzyme, which is found in the reticular endothelial system, that is the lymph nodes and the spleen. So the vast majority of bilirubin comes from breakdown of red cells and is changed from a compound like this by removing the iron and the globin, which are then recycled and turned into this yellow stuff we call bilirubin, because this ring is broken down and split at one of these points and unrolled by the hemoxygenase enzyme. Dramatic, clever, but that's how it is. Now that is ordinary bilirubin. We must remember something about bilirubin. It exists in two forms, conjugated form and unconjugated form. Roughly the difference between conjugated and unconjugated bilirubin is that unconjugated bilirubin is toxic and can injure cells in high concentration and kill them, particularly that of the neurons, brain cells and babies with high level of this compound in the blood have a disease called connectress and may very well die. So what we do is we conjugate it. We join it with another chemical and we make it water soluble so it cannot penetrate into the cells and it cannot damage them and it can be excreted. So let's just review that. There are two types of bilirubin, conjugated and unconjugated forms of bilirubin. Unconjugated bilirubin is toxic and can injure and kill cells. So it's very reasonable that hemolytic jaundice, where there is lots of unconjugated bilirubin in the blood, is never severe. So what do we do? We conjugate it. We join it with another chemical, the glucogenic acid, in the liver, and we make it water-soluble, so it cannot penetrate into the cells and it cannot damage them. And from here it leaves the biliary tree to be excreted. 
and the biliary tree at this point in the liver consists of little canals called the biliary caniculi. So that's all we have to know about bilirubin. We should know something about how it's formed, something about conjugated and unconjugated forms of bilirubin. If we did not conjugate bilirubin, we would all be permanently jaundiced, permanently yellow. There is an animal called the gun rat, which cannot conjugate bilirubin. So what color is it? It's yellow. Does it die early? Yes, it does. It dies for two reasons. Firstly, because of brain disease, connectress, and secondly, because doctors, people, are so interested to follow his unique bilirubin metabolism, and they kill it, because it's a classical motto. Thank you very much for watching. I hope it's been useful. This is one of the first series of my talks about liver disease and jaundice.